Hey there, YouTube land. Big Dave here. And uh, so here it is Friday, January, what, the 22nd, 21st? I don't even know. Um, so I decided I had enough things on my mind to make a video. I, I don't just turn the iPad on and make videos. I, I have to have something to motivate me to make the videos uh, that inspires me to either questions that somebody sends or something I see that makes me want to do a video. So this read, let's see if we can just see this. It's kind of weird. It's got a little heavy spot over here. You can kind of see that in the light. If I put it in the light. Um, and then it's kind of thin over here and it's kind of uh, whatever over there. You know, this is like the x-ray machine. When you look at the reed and you see what's in the reed and it's all kind of heavier up to here. Then you got thin on that side and thin up this side. But then you got this kind of weird, weird thing over here where it's not so even up at the tip. And then if you look at the reed this way, it's a little ripply. But the heaviest part of the reed is right in the middle. That's the heaviest part of the reed. So then why would you follow directions that are on something I just read and firm up the corners and literally you're doing this. This is the middle of the reed. This is the heaviest part of the reed. And if you need to um, give a little support or lightly press into the reed to uh, change the pitch or whatever you have to do, squeezing on these light sides, it's not going to do anything. And this, um, one of these articles I read in a journal that was just came out about clarinet, pitch, all this stuff. It's a good article, it has some really good stuff in it. But then it talks about firming up the corners and man, you gotta just, uh, I don't know. It's not, it's, it, it doesn't work that way. You know, it doesn't work that way. This here is the heaviest part of the reed. It's right here in the middle. And you have to learn to find how to put your support onto that, not squeezing up the corners. I have this on other videos and it's information that came from some of the big teachers in New York. You know, when I used to go on the bus to New York from New Jersey and, uh, or whatever, make appointment back in the 1970s into the 1980s to go study with some of the big teachers. And um, one of the teachers, more than one of the teachers, you know, that's something they used to talk about. Uh, another question I had that somebody sent me was about the double lip armature. And um, I don't really use it, you know. I can do it. I can do it on the saxophone. I can do it on the clarinet, but I really don't use it. Um, I don't, I, I'm not a big advocate of it. If it works for you, that's what the world goes around because um, you get to use it and uh, see what it does for you. So if you get a certain particular response out of it or uh, it, it does something to your sound where you feel it takes the higher partials, it's not as harsh or whatever it is, then that's a, a reason to use it. Maybe you have teeth problems, which I actually have teeth problems. And I haven't been playing hardly at all because I just had a whole bunch of things done in my mouth. So it's it's really a couple months now. And uh, I just took this out of the closet. So we'll experiment. And now let's see if we can find some of these things that we're talking about. I have not even touched this. I don't even know if it works. I may open it up and pads might fall out. Um... I don't know what it's going to do. Here it is. 
Do I use cork grease? Eh, sometimes. Not really. Sometimes I do. Sometimes I just go like that and stick the barrel on. And other times, that's what I do. All right, we got the pieces together. So this barrel, what is this barrel? This is the buffet barrel. This is the Selmer 10G. And this is a buffet barrel because it plays a certain way on this clarinet that I like. It's 66 long. Um, that was another article I was reading about controlling the pitch in one of the journals about changing your barrel, finding a barrel. Um, a shorter barrel might be a solution to bring the pitch up on the clarinet, but it can also throw the whole clarinet out of tune. So sometimes you're better off making a different adjustment than starting to mess with the barrels. Honestly, unless you're doing some kind of weird thing, uh, I would not go more than a 65 barrel, which I do use occasionally. Uh, you, sometimes it's cold in the room where maybe you're playing a show and the theater is cold. And then every time you pick up the clarinet and you got to play this little thing, maybe you don't even have to play much clarinet, but the clarinet's not warm. So you can sit there and blow into it and warm it up, and then you go to play, it's still cold, and you're flat. So that, that's not, doesn't work. So then you might have to have a, um, you know, a, a little bit shorter barrel, and, and, and you might not find one right away that works. The, just because you got a shorter barrel, it doesn't mean that it works on your clarinet. It might not match the clarinet. My original barrel for this plays pretty well in tune, but this buffet barrel, it just plays better on here. It does certain things that I like better than the original barrel. The, the tuning, the response, and it gives me a certain thing about it that I, that I like. Okay, and like I said, I have not used this in months. So let's look at this read. I'm just looking also to see if I see growing on it. <laughs> um, oh, this read has more of an even thing to it. Now, this is a good read. Or well, at least it was a good read at one time. I don't even know when I put this on. August? I'm not sure. Okay, and then it has lighter at the tip. And you can see where the, the heavy part is more in the middle. So this is completely dry. So I'll wet it a little bit. Sometimes I just put the read on play without wetting it. And it'll, it'll get wet as you play. So here it is. I basically line it up with the tip. I don't go much over the tip and I don't go under the tip. Just kind of line it up with the tip. Put my ligature on, my old Van Doren silver plated ligature. It's been around a very long time. And then I tighten it down, not too tight. And I'm going to make a small adjustment in where the reed is sitting. I want it to go more a little bit so that I can uh, have it more centered. And that's it. It's a little bit over the top, maybe, like a hair. Barely. Now, I'm not going to play a big sound. I'm going to do like an air to tone thing just to see. I haven't played this in months. You know, maybe it doesn't even want to play. And one thing about a clarinet is, if you put too much air into it right away, you could actually kind of hurt your throat because it doesn't take a tremendous amount of air and it could be resistant because of the reed and you could kind of um, hurt your larynx and stuff. So you gotta go easy in the beginning. So there, it's a little bit airy. You know, it's not really what I would be looking for right now. See, it is, it's resistant. All right, I told you, I have not had this together in months. It's resistant. Okay, there it is. A little resistance and I can feel it in the larynx. Um, it'll, it'll get better as time goes on. I'm not going to worry about it. it was, uh, after I finish this video, it's going back in the closet. Those are 
harmonics, overtones. Um, now, let's go back and talk about what we were saying before. Here's the pitch. Here's the pitch. Sounds like I'm getting messages from somewhere. Messages. And there's music playing also. Okay, so. And this reed is resistant. I'm not going to lie to you, it is. I'm going to pull this out a hair because I'm a touch on the sharp side. And the lower register, too, is a little bit on the sharp side. Okay, so there. This is close enough. If I had to play with other instruments, I would find my way and then make my adjustments. those famous notes um, I have this in another video too you know one of the things that happens there is you have one pitch on the high F which I'm using a closed F by the way you have to learn your alternate fingerings because this fingering is not a good fingering for the opening of that piece see what it wants to do is and it's just not a good fingering for the beginning of that piece This is an F and a G. This is another G. This is on the based on the C fingering. It's not the other G. This is the F. This is the G. Here, here's the high G. And that's the harmonic G. So if you're already playing a covered F, Now, if you're just going quickly to the F, you can use the harmonic rather than going and finding the other fingering. But if you have to hold it out, it's going to be a little flat. So it's not a good fingering if you have to hold it out. But if you're just going to go there very quickly, da da dum, you know, you don't have to go. It's two totally different colors. You have uh, closed F going to open G back. So it's better to use the harmonic, in my opinion, and in other clarinetist opinions who I've studied with over the years who were master clarinetists, you know. Um, anyway, okay, so there. I don't want to make this tremendously long. I'm at 13 minutes already. I'm very conscious about how long the videos are. Let's talk about the double lip for a second. All right, so here. Regular, double lip. As its thing. Maybe if I had to play a delicate passage and I wanted it to be a certain play, maybe I would play double it. I don't know. I can do both. I practiced both for years. All right. So um, on the saxophone, it's the same thing. You're going to hardly know the difference. I can feel the vibration in my head changes. So what you hear on the recording might be almost identical. I don't know. And that kind of chirping in there it has nothing to do with anything except the reed is 
uncooperative. You know, if I had to play a gig right now on the clarinet, I would go find a, a reed that's less troublesome than this. You know, this is a little bit kind of weird. Uh, I don't know what it even is. Let's see what it is. It's a thing. It's a reed. It's a V21 Van Doren three and a half plus. I like them. They play well on this mouthpiece, which is the mouthpiece I use most of the time. It's a B46. I have several of these. Uh, some of them are slightly opened at the tip and have a thinner thing for Dixieland and stuff like that. This is a stock B46. And I have other mouthpieces that I use. I use a CL4 and I use a M, whatever it is, 30, I think. You know, I have another video that has a couple clarinet mouthpieces on there, but this is the one I've been using for years and years and years. And you might say, oh, well, you know, I heard the B45 is the best mouthpiece on the whole planet. Some people like it. I don't like the curve. The curve goes like this. I don't like it. And it's also, you talk about pitch. It can be difficult to keep the pitch consistent throughout the whole register. The slope on this one is more gradual. And it's easier to control. And it also has a little bit more uh, speak faster on it. Um, that's it. Sometimes I play a Rico mouthpiece, whatever it's called. A, a four, a X4. I don't even know what it is. So I don't know what all these gadgets are called. <laughs> you know, I mean, I know what I use all the time. I take it out of my box. I can play it. You know, the, the uh, Rico, it plays. Um... So really, it's all what works for you. But the message I gave you in the beginning about the reed, this is really important that you realize that the middle of the reed is the heaviest part. So I don't know why you would be squeezing up on the sides, which is the weakest part, and it just kills your sound. Just leave this out of the way. Don't let it squeeze into and up onto the corners of the reed uh, your sound that when you push on the sides the sides will go up when you push on the middle a little bit look what happens it's the reed stays flat and one of the great teachers in new york said when i went to him on the clarinet years ago um the reed is flat so this has to be flat along with it. Okay, so there it is. Uh, we'll put this away for a few more months now because uh, I'm doing carpentry and I'm putting a sink faucet in today. And there's really no gigs right now. So uh, I'm, you know, if I when things calm down and uh, I have gigs lined up and you know I'll sit for a week or two and practice all my things. All right, so uh, have a great day, and I hope you get something out of this video. And uh, if you liked it, click like. Um, I'm not monetized, so it doesn't do anything for me. Uh, you know, and uh, I don't even know if it's come up with ads on it, but I don't get anything out of it because I'm not monetized. So um, it's my own personal choice that I, I don't want to be monetized and, and all that right now. Um, my friend makes uh, a few pennies here and there and a couple dollars here and there. Because unless you have millions and millions of views um, and are dancing around in your underwear and stuff like that, uh, <laughs> you know, you're not getting all that much out of it. Okay. Catch you later.